I'm very attracted to a flaw in an image, but I think in general people are attracted to flaws. Um, there's something about an image or even a person not being perfect that kind of makes them beautiful. find something that kind of has a problem to it, either a painterly problem, like for example, um, you wouldn't ever want to put a person with a red shirt in the middle of a painting. It's just like, you just wouldn't ever want to do that, so of course I really want to do that. Um, just because it's a nightmare, it's something to kind of overcome. You really like, you, you're taught to have your eye kind of move through an image and that sort of ends up being a successful image and you can put your canvas on the wall and turn it upside down and technically it should kind of read the same way. Um, I like when there are problems that stop you and I think it's um, those problems that, that become interesting subjects for, for painting. New Yorker by birth, um, third generation New York City family. Um, I'm a painter. I'm also a third generation painter. Uh, people have, you know, doctors in their family or lawyers in their family, and they kind of pass that on, and we do the same in our families. My grandfather's a painter, my uncle is a sculptor, my father is a photographer and filmmaker, my sister is a filmmaker, my husband's a painter, and then there's me. <laughs> My dad and mom and sister and I would walk around the East Village and go to shows and go get food and, you know, ride bikes around and kind of, you know, ditch the bike in front of an opening and check it out for a minute. I grew up with um, contemporary art everywhere. My parents collect a lot of contemporary art. My dad trades with artists who he photographs, so our, our home was filled with contemporary art and this is of the 80s and, and 90s. So I knew a lot about conceptual art. I knew a lot about, I saw a lot of the pieces that were being made. I, I knew a lot of the artists that were making the paintings. And so I kind of fetishized some of the stuff that I had never seen or only could see in museums. And I, that probably pushed me into um, a vein of work that was a, a much older. I was interested in, um, Clay at the time, um, Paul Clay, um, <laughs> interested in Emil Nolde, um, interested in Turner, enormously interested in Turner, to this day, in fact, um, Winslow Homer to, to a certain degree, um, but really anything that I could get my hands on that demanded to be a watercolor. I loved Sumi'i painting and I loved studying Japanese watercolor and, and ink painting. Where do you see yourself in relation to uh, painters, you know, kind of contemporary painters such as, uh, you know, Toymans, Sassnel, or, um, you know, people along those lines, maybe even Doig, things mm -hmm. like that. Do you look at those painters too? I do. I'm less, um, I'm less involved in their work. Those references have come up before. Um, and I know less about their work than I probably one would imagine I do. With Doig, I think that there's an interesting uh, repetition of image, sort of interest that I definitely, I mean, I have that and I, when I see that in his work, there's something really um, personally satisfying. I get what he's interested in. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't spend a lot of time looking at other contemporary painters. <laughs> One of the things that's exciting about the show that I'm mounting 
now is it's a look back over work that was made over a 10 year period, including brand new canvases that I'm literally finishing yesterday, um, with paintings that I made directly out of college. Um, where how I get to them is a little bit more complicated. I worked on this method um, originally because I wanted to not choose one thing. I wanted to be able to have my mind in painting and in photography and in sort of computers, which is what I use to unify them. My process is um, a combination of painting both in oil and watercolor um, with printing. I use a, a pigment printer, um, a high-end pigment printer, and then photography. So it's, it's a combination of um, a number of different mediums and then forcing them kind of to sit in one canvas. I would definitely characterize myself as a reactive painter. So I see something and then it kind of gives me an idea or pulls me in a direction and then I'll try that direction. So that kind of brings me to the color studies that I make. Um, when I have a slide, I make a scan of it, and I print it onto watercolor paper, and then I print it three or four different times, and then try a very distinct palette for it, um, sort of three manifestations of it. Um, and that's in color pencil and watercolors. When I find an image of a woman wading into the ocean, I think of a lot of other painters who have done that work. And what's exciting for me is making that using my technique. It doesn't feel like they're paintings, but I get to think about their work while I'm making them. By the time that I'm ready to paint it in oil, um, I've already made prints of it, I've already made watercolors of it, I've already made enlargements of it. I've already glued it onto the canvas and sealed it. This is an image that I have in my hands, and it's really just a matter of putting out the oil colors that are going to best fulfill this image's sort of like potential. source material is 35 millimeter vintage slides, um, which have, I think, sort of a, a beauty to them that begs to become paintings. When I see a vintage shop that has, you know, old boxes of disgusting, moldy, revolting slides, it's like mana from heaven. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll buy, um, I'll buy anything that was shot together um, if possible because I love to find images that were shot on the same day or in the same event or afternoon um, or of the same family over a period of years. Um, I'm not interested in the specifics of the people. Typically I kind of pick images that are a bit more anonymous in terms of portraiture. I would characterize um, the kind of image that I make as sort of a peopled landscape as opposed to a portrait in a landscape. Um, I love exteriors, I don't typically paint interiors. So right there, half of what I find I don't use. I'm looking for an image that references something in the history of painting. There's something very appealing about thinking about images in groups for me series, groups, that kind of thing. There are types of events that I love to find. Um, picnics, days of the beach. Um, I like them when they're weirder. I like them when there's 
a sort of a secondary interpretation. The darker, um, odder feeling images are, are more appealing to me. I find that in looking through many, many vintage slides as I do, um, there becomes evident very concrete categories um, of things that people document in their lives and therefore that we all collect of memories of the things that have happened in our lives. So in, in a sense I'm playing on that collective memory um, held by people who really remember their lives through photographs as we all do in the modern world. Turquoise blue, titanium white, olive green, really Mars black, meridian gray, uh, permanent green, brilliant. cadmium green, light, light yellow, rose gray, really Naples oh, yellow, really light magenta, rose matter, blocks makes a gray, cadmium yellow, deep. Shell pink is a good color, so it's a mixed color. 